Hello everyone, this is Debbie Henderson from Debbie's Designs. Welcome to my afternoon tea time on a card. I want to start out by apologizing for being an hour late. I was stuck running errands and I knew I wasn't going to get here in time. So I, I think it worked out for most of you that four o'clock uh, Eastern time worked out better. So I'm going to give it just a few more seconds. I can see you guys all coming on. Welcome. And welcome to those of you guys watching later, because I know some of you guys are still working as I am live. So today what I am using is the Band Together stamp set, along with the Detailed Bands dies. You're going to see the dies that I'm using on each card, because I'm doing two cards today for you. Um, so I had I had done a poll on uh, the Stampin' Ink Designs page and you guys voted for this one. It was the most popular. And what I'll do is I had listed three stamp sets and I will use the other two. But I started with this one because it was voted as the most popular. So let me get started with card number one. I am going to be using this large image. And this is the first card. I'm going to be showing you how I color with the blends uh, markers. And then I also use the brick and mortar uh, embossing folder. So I'm going to show you a close up of that because most of it is covered here. Let me move this aside so I can put the card there for you guys to see. So for layers, I'm using the Seaside Spray 11 by 4 and a quarter, scored at 5 and a half. A scrap piece of Whisper White for the sentiment. The Whisper White layer is five and a half by three and a quarter wide. And then you'll notice here that I used one of the labels, the band. And I've gone ahead and used the Mango Melody and I'll explain to you why it's still sitting in the die. As you can see, I used it with all of the little pieces still stuck in. Now I, card, I call these cardstock guts. So the guts are still sitting inside of the label even though they're cut. I'm gonna show you how I did that. So let's start out, I'm gonna bring the big shot in so I can use the brick and mortar embossing folder. Now, because my cardstock is so long, I'm gonna go right up to the score line and then fold this over and put it through. Now, this is our new base that is going to go with our new 3D embossing folders. It's a little bit thicker than the clear plates and it accommodates the new folders that are eventually going to go with our new machine. Now let me show you a close-up of the embossing. I really love the subtle look of these bricks. I hope you can see that on the video. It's really neat. Now because there's so many bumps in this embossing, what happens is it shrinks your, your cardstock a little bit. So once you're done, you'll notice that it's a little bit shorter on the front. So what I normally do is just take a pair of scissors and trim that. And that's only because the embossing really presses down into the cardstock and shortens one side of it. Now that's all ready to go. Let me bring my card back in. So my next step, I'm going to be using the Stamparatus today to stamp my large flower. I'm going to add my card stock. I'm using this line right here to line it up. And then I'm going to position the flower where I want it. It is going to be a little bit longer than the card stock, so that's why it's good to go ahead and position ahead of time. I'm going to grab it. And now I'm bringing in the Memento Black ink. And what's great about this is if you mess up on inking the flower the first time, 
you can go back and do it again. So now I'm just going to press this in place. Make sure you press over the whole image. Now that looks perfect. The first time I did it on my other card, I had some petals here that did not stamp correctly. They were lighter. So what I did is I just added ink on this side, just a little bit on the flower, and then re-stamped that portion. Okay, so now that's all set to color. And let me bring in the blends markers I'm using today are the new uh, Light and Dark Seaside Spray, the Light and Dark Granny Apple, and then the Light and Dark Mango Melody. So let me start out by doing the center. That's the easiest part. I'm using the dark. And then I'm going to add just a little bit dark down here where there would be a shadow. Now I'm bringing in the light color. Okay, and that's it for the Mango Melody. Next, I'm going to start out with the Dark Granny Apple. And what I do normally is I look at my, uh, my image and I try to figure out where the shadow would sit. So you're going to have some shadow under the flower. You're also going to have some shadows where the petals meet. And then right here, this is like a folded over petal. So I'm going to add shadows to the inside part. And then the bottom of the stem. It looks kind of funky right now, but now I'm going to bring in the light granny apple. I'm going to go ahead and color. Now you could leave it this way, but I don't like where you can see the scribbling where they meet. So that's where you take your marker and you just kind of like scrub and then they, they meld together. See how that erases, kind of erases that rigid look. I'm going to do the same thing here. Again, we have some yuckiness going on in the middle. So you're just going to rub where the two colors meet and that disappears. Now, same thing on the stem. You're going to see it's a lot lighter when I add the second color. So I'm going to rub where they meet. Same thing right here. And now the leaf, I'm trying to move so that you don't see a shadow too much where my hand is laying. Now I'm gonna scrub where these two meet. And then this side's gonna be a little bit lighter. So that's all I'm gonna do as far as the leaves and the stem goes. Now we've got the Seaside Spray. Now one thing I wanna tell you about blends markers, a lot of people like to tell you to start with the dark first or the light first. Don't listen to them. You are the one that needs to experiment with your markers and you do it the way you prefer. I always like to start with the dark color first. I find that it's easier to um, blend them together. So now what I'm doing is finding the areas that would fall under the petals because that's where the shadows would sit. I'm going to do that to all of the petals. So I'm using the dark color first. It will just take me a second to go around all the petals. And then around the center would also be a place where there would be shadows. Okay, and that's it for the shadow. So now I'm going to bring in the light. I'm gonna do one flower at a time. Again, when you color, you're going to see a line where the two colors meet. So just rub and it disappears. So now I can go pretty fast. Okay, again, right here, it's a little, sorry about that, my phone just rang, I just had to turn it off. So there was a little pause there for just a second. Okay, so you can see where I am blending, where the light and dark meet. 
So that's the trick with these markers. A lot of people just color and don't bother with the blending, but the blending is what makes it more realistic. Okay, so there's flower number one. And some people leave some white space too. I choose not to today, sometimes I do. So now we're going to go ahead and do flower number two right here where the leaves show would be dark in between the petals. And what's great about these flower images, anywhere that you see these black lines, that's where you wanna add some dark color. Okay, now with the light. I'm just gonna quickly blend the lines. My next card also has the blends markers. I actually have a, quite a few images. I've done some ahead of time. Okay, that's it for the flower image. Now I'm going to bring the card base back in. Oh, before I do that, I need to... Now the reason these are called band together and detailed bands, you'll see the other one when I do it too, you have these little uh, skinny strips on each end and what I did with them is I wrapped them around the cardstock like a band, like a belly band. Now what I've done here, I, I have a piece that I cut out ahead of time. So this is what it would look like if you were to use it as a detail die. Very pretty. You can do it that way. You could do this a different color and add that back in or you can use the same piece. But what I chose to do today is I left all of the, the little pieces in there by running it through my Big Shot just once. Now I'm going to add glue. Now this worked for me the other day. I'm hoping it's going to work again this time. So I'm adding glue before I even take it out. And what I did do is actually um, loosened up the two ends. Whoops, I got the wrong tool. So both ends are loose. I know I'm going to wrap them around, so it didn't matter to me if I, if I poked the end piece. Okay, so both of my pieces are ready to go. I'm going to actually take this on my white piece, press it down so that it glues, and then I'm going to start it out on both ends and pull. Now I did have a few of the little pieces that did not stay on there, but you can always pull them out and put them back in. Let's see if I can grab them. So there's one. So that's just a quick way of trying to keep all of the guts intact by adding the liquid glue before you press it down. Now let's see, we've got one more. That would be this one. And I'm hoping there's enough glue there. Okay, so those are all intact. Now I'm ready to wrap this around. So I'm going to use my snail and just press that in place. And so this is all ready to go. Now all I need to do is add dimensionals. And I'm going to add a lot of dimensionals. If you guys follow me, you know that I use a lot of these. It's really hard for me to make a card without using dimensionals. Now I may have to trim my little piece of white cardstock just a little because of the shrinkage of the embossing folder. Now I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch on the left hand side and I do have to trim that just a tad.
Now we need to do the sentiment. And this time I'm going to use a different one. This one says celebrate the best day ever. Let me bring my black ink pad back in. This one says you are amazing. Now we have this oval shape that comes with the dies. Let me bring in my big shot. So I am using the Big Shot a few times today. I know a lot of you guys like to see me use it. Okay, let me bring my cards back in. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do my linen thread before I glued this down, but that's okay. I'll just wrap it around the whole cardstock front. And I did that three times. Now, one thing I never do when I do ribbon or linen thread or any of the baker's twines, I never cut a piece off ahead of time. I leave it on the spool. And that way you don't waste so much. Now, let me bring in my loops. This one's not cooperating. Okay, just a little more. Now I'm going to cut that off. And you know that when I'm making cards for the afternoon tea time, I do a little bit more of the detailed cards, so the cards do take a little longer. And stamping dimensionals one more time. I need to just move this over just a little more. And then lastly, I'm going to add some of the um, woven thread sequins. Now I'm going to bring my pick me up tool. Have you guys, I wanted to mention this because I think maybe a lot of you guys might, might have missed it in the catalog. So the take your pick tool now has a new adapter you can put on the end. This goes just like the little die brush that we have. So you just unscrew and that screws right in. What I did is I bought another one so I wouldn't have to mess with moving it. So I love this and it's a little bit more uh, rigid than the one that we had before and it works well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add some sequins. I'm just going to add them in the same spot as my other card just to move things along. And I did try to stay with colors that coordinate with my card. So here's a little white one. And I always use the flat spatula on the other end to press this down. It seems to work really well. Now let's go with a darker blue. Whoops. And let me see if I can find a smaller one down here. Oh, I had two in there. Wow, that one went flying somewhere. I'll find it later. Let's see, what else can we do? Uh, another light blue. Now I just lost one. I need another drop of glue. I think the drop of glue went flying with the sequin. So let's try this one again. One more. Okay, that's card number one. Now the next card is going to be a little more detailed, but I have gone ahead and done some of the coloring and cutting ahead of time. So let me put this one aside. 
And I am again going to be using blends markers. So this time we have the Crushed Curry, the Call Me Clover Light and Dark, and then the Flirty Flamingo Light and Dark. Let me just make some room here. I, I need to spread myself out just a little more. And let me bring in the card. This is the second card we're going to make. So this has a lot of layers, a lot of die cuts. So I've cut them ahead of time. For the card base, I'm using mint macaron five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And before I show you the, the other layers, I'm going to go ahead, I have some stamping here in the background. I do need to go ahead and clean my stamp image. And I'm just going to go ahead and add this more towards the center this time. I don't need to worry about where it's going to sit. And I'm actually going to just stamp the flower. And I don't want the whole flower to show, so I'm going to bring in a post-it note. And I'm using Mint Macaron ink. Let me move these markers. And what I'm going to do is just add ink to the flower image. I need to move it over just a tad. Okay, now I'm just going to position my cardstock where I want the flower image. And I'm going to add a post-it note right about there. There's my flirt first flower. Whoops. Next, I want to add one in the opposite corner. So again, I'm only going to ink the flower. And I want this one about here. So again, I'm going to add a post-it note. Okay, so there's my two flowers, very simple. Now, let me bring in some of the layers that I'm using and I'll explain. Um, so I did do three flowers and three leaves. I've gone ahead and done two of each already. I'm going to do two with you. So I'm going to bring in the Stamparatus so I can stamp one more flower. So I'm bringing in a piece of the scrap white. And this time I'm going to ink using the Memento Black. Oops, I might have gotten that over the edge. No, it worked out, okay. I do need to tell you a funny story about this card. So this is the first time I use this stamp set. So when I dug out the dies out of here that I needed, I just put this away. I did all of my flowers, so three flowers and three leaves, and I ended up fussy cutting them, not realizing that we have dies to cut out the flower and the leaves. So how dumb was that, huh? So note to self, always check your dies before you do any fussy cutting. Okay, so now the leaf is going to be colored with the dark Call Me Clover and then followed by the light Call Me Clover. Let me see if I can move this so you can see it without a shadow. So again, we're going to blend those hard lines. See how they disappeared. Same thing on the little leaf. Hold on a minute. My husband just came home and I know the dog's going, the beagle's going to start howling. So I just went and shut the door. Okay, now for the center, same thing. 
the Dart Crush Curry, or not Crush Curry, Mango Melody, followed by the Light. And now, instead of the Seaside Spray for the flower like I did in card number one, we're going to use Flirty Flamingo. And again, I'm going where there would be a shadow under each petal. Let me see. So if you guys don't have any of our blends markers yet, you don't know what you're missing because these are fabulous. So you could leave the flower like this if you wanted, but now I'm going to add the light Flirty Flamingo, blend those hard lines. And you can see how quick this colors. So I'm almost done coloring. Okay, so I like the way that looks. You can see the flower and the leaf. Look at the detail, really nice. Now I'm going to bring the big shot in because I realize I don't have to fussy cut, right? I don't know how that got in there. Okay, here's my leaf. I am going to add a piece of washi tape. And same thing with the flower. Now, because I do have a sentiment on this card, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now too. So I'm going to stamp beautiful inside and out. I'm just gonna move these. I just wanna make sure that's dry before I do anything with it. And this is a cute label shape that does come with these dies. So one more big shot. And then I'll show you what else I cut. There's more because look at all the layers on this card. Okay. So now I'm gonna leave this here just so you can see the layers. This is the little detailed band shape. It's beautiful. And I actually used the little die brush to take out all the guts and it, it worked fabulously. I also cut out three of these leaves and three of these little branchy things. I wanted to show you when I first started making this card, I actually cut out a piece of flirty flamingo, but I didn't think it popped out enough. That's why I went. I decided to go with a white. But isn't that pretty in the flirty flamingo also? So now all we have left to do is to assemble the card. So I'm going to start out with the flowers. And I added one in the corner on the bottom left and then two at the top. And I don't want the flowers facing the same way, so I kind of moved this one like a little bit sideways so it would look different. Next, what I did, because this is not long enough to go the whole length of the card front, I took my paper snips and I just made a little banner on one end. And I'm going to glue this in place with dimensionals. And it's going to allow me to be able to tuck everything underneath. Now this looks awful because of the middle, but this fits right over. It goes right in the center. We're also going to add the sentiment with dimensionals.
and it's going to go right in the center so lots of layers lots of layers now let me add my bling before I forget and these are from the noble peacock um, I have little pieces of my sheets only because I did a product share and I had to split them up between four people. So I'm trying to use up the little leftovers that I had. Okay, so there's my bling. Now let me bring the rest of what I need. And the liquid glue. So I'm going to glue the leaves in place just by tucking them. And they're going to go right under the detail. So you can see by raising that fancy layer in the center, you can slide these right under. Now this one I slid under the, uh, under the flowers. So I'm almost done. We'll put one right there. So you could go crazy with these layers. They're also pretty. And lastly, we have these cute little white pieces, these little branches. I'm going to put one there. Now the one on the bottom, I know I had to cut some off just so I could sneak it under. And one more. So I hope it was worth it that I was an hour late getting on for you guys to see these two beautiful cards. And there you go. Let me bring the other one back in. So this was the one with the brick and mortar embossed background. And again, I used blends markers on both cards. And don't forget to share my video. Um, actually, I don't know if you can share. Yeah, you should be able to share it because this is an open group. Uh, and I will draw a name to win both of these cards sometime tomorrow. So thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I will be live again on Sunday with my Step It Up Sunday on my Debbie's Designs business page. And that's at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you then. Have a good remainder of the day, everyone.